Panther people, what's going on? Phil Perkins here. Thanks for choosing the Panther Post. This is my first episode, so I appreciate you clicking that link, taking a look at our inaugural piece. I'm going to be here talking about all things Panthers, whether it's the offseason, like right now, middle of April, and also pregame, postgame, and any breaking news that happens. Oh, like, I don't know, the, the Panthers basically dropping out of the QB draft this year and picking up third overall pick Sam Darnold. Thanks for joining. All right, so a little bit about me. I'm a broadcast journalist in Southern Ontario. That's right, Ontario, Canada, not Ontario, California. So safe to say I'm surrounded by AFC East fans, especially Bills fans, who you can kind of say are kind of Carolina Panther fans. Another cool thing about my job is the fact that I'm on TV every single day. And despite the fact that I am in Bills country, hasn't really stopped me from talking about the Panthers on the air all the time. Sam Darnold's 23 years old. He's younger than last year's first overall pick, Joe Burrow. I think he have a great supporting cast around him with CMC and Robbie Anderson. And also, picking eighth, the Panthers can pick the best available player. Talking about the Panthers out loud is like talking to a wall. I have been a member of the Roaring Riot since 2015, so I have met a lot of people through that. So there's a lot of dialogue back and forth uh, via Twitter. I've gone down to Charlotte a bunch to catch a ton of home games, but I really felt like having a, a video like this, a channel like this, uh, to kind of start now. I, the, the franchise is so young. When you look at the NFL as a whole, being over 100 years old, and the Panthers only being around for just over 25 years, and now with Tepper, the richest owner in the NFL, as well as Matt Rule building that culture of winning, that and what they're doing in South Carolina as well with the headquarters, I think it's a buy-in now, reap the benefits later with this team. Now, speaking of Rule and the kind of team that he's building, and whether you're a former player of his or you just went to Temple, it is crystal clear the kind of culture that he's, he's trying to create uh, in Charlotte. And just look no further than the free agent pickup. Some of the ones I really liked, going chalk here a little bit, but Hassan Reddick, uh, Temple Owl himself, the guy's just a baller. Obviously, some people might be thinking that last year was an outlier, but I feel that giving him that prove-it deal again, after he proved it last year, could only inspire him to, you know, wreck some people, especially with Brian Burns on the other side of the defensive line. And I know he's undersized, but Denzel Perriman is one feisty dude. And he reminds me a little bit of that tenacity that Sam Mills brought. Uh, and also the fact that dude just straight up hits hard and he needs to set the tone every single Sunday. Because from what I remembered last year, and there was a lot of things last year that was just kind of tough. But to hear Whitehead, Nah, B. And I understand trying to fill in for Luke Keekley is tough, uh, but at least literally make an impact, which he did not. All right, of course, I'm burying the lead here. The fact that Sam Darnold at this point is going to be the presumptive starter next year has polarized a lot of people. But it hasn't polarized people who actually played in the NFL, coached in the NFL, or analyzed Darnold out of USC just three years ago. It seems that almost across the board, everyone wants him to succeed uh, with the Carolina Panthers and Joe Brady with that offense. And all the excuses are put out there for him uh, in Manhattan when he was there. Oh, Adam Gase, he had no supporting cast. Well, now you got Joe Brady, CMC, you got Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, David Moore, maybe Rondell Moore. He does have every opportunity to not only be a Ryan Tannehill, potentially, for 2021, but also Baker Mayfield. Do you guys remember who his first head coach was in the league? He's had three, it seems like, in three years. He's got Hugh Jackson. He had Freddie Kitchens, who they appointed because they seem to be buddies, but that didn't work out. And now he has Kevin Stefanski, who has helped him rebound a little bit. Uh, he's reeled in the personality and just continued to be a baller on the field. So maybe if Darnold can get somewhere in between there, could be a bargain. We won't get upset at that second and fourth rounder for next year on top of the sixth rounder sent to the Jets for this year. Of course, I'm starting this channel in the middle of April, and hope is a plenty at this time of year because, of course, the NFL draft is less than three weeks away. And the Panthers, if we don't remember, have a ton of holes on this roster. Besides Taylor Moten, their offensive line is shaky at best. Uh, since James Bradbury left and no one's actually replaced him fully, I know they picked up A.J. Bouye. This could be another prove-it year for him. After last year, it was a wash, basically, with PEDs and injuries as well. And also, we need a backup running back. We need to really replace Curtis Samuel, and I wouldn't mind a couple more dudes on the defensive line and maybe a, a really rangy linebacker that can cover tight ends as well as the crazy amount of wide receivers in the NFC South. So I trust no one more 
than Daniel Jeremiah, Peter Schrager, because the fact that Schrager is the reporter, so he has contacts everywhere. And also Daniel Jeremiah, former scout, also knows a ton of GMs, could be a GM in the making. So I enjoy the fact that his mock drafts, kind of like Peter, is not so much what he would do as a GM, but what he thinks GMs will do come the draft. So let's take a look at what they had to say. So it seems like the first three picks, there's going to be a trend here, kind of like chalk. Jacksonville Jaguars, Lawrence, Wilson to the Jets, Mac Jones, who no one would have said this a month ago unless your name is Chris Sims, going to the Niners. This one was surprising. The fact that the New England Patriots are going to trade with the team that they embarrassed, 28-3, the Atlanta Falcons. Do you really think Arthur Blank, dude with that mustache and who routinely wears things that are made out of allure, will be down with this? I don't know, but Schrager knows more than I do. Them trading up to number four to get Justin Fields, who was my pick, for the Panthers if they hadn't already had Sam Darnold. Uh, but there are people out there who think if he does fall, still take him. Uh, Jamar Chase, of course, Burrow's boy with LSU. They get reunited. Apparently, he's been lobbying for that. Rashawn Slater to the Dolphins, keeping Tua Tungabailoa's non-blind side clean. Then you got the Arizona Cardinals getting the what I've been hearing now is the LeBron James of the 2021 NFL draft in Kyle Pitts. Is it the measurable? 6'6", 260, and can move like crazy. He was my first choice uh, if he did fall to number eight for the Panthers to take because it's a pretty deep draft when it comes to the left tackle. All right, at number eight, Peter Schrager has the Carolina Panthers going to the left tackle position with Panay Sewell out of Oregon, the gigantic, nimble human who I watched in his pro day. Dude ran pretty fast. I think he benched about 30 and a half reps at 225. Broad jump wasn't great, but when is he ever going to do that on the field? Um, just last year, I saw mock drafts where he was going number one overall over Trevor Lawrence uh, in those way too early mock drafts. So some people calling him a generational talent. Daniel Jeremiah, who I respect his eyes, uh, thinks that maybe not so much. But any attempt to try to get that franchise left tackle to protect whoever's quarterback, whether it's Sam Donald or Sam Howell, who knows, uh, they need to find somebody. All right, speaking of Daniel Jeremiah, let's see what he had to say. One, two, three, same, same, same. Lawrence, Wilson, Jones, Atlanta Falcons not trading with Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft and staying put, getting their QB of the future, Trey Lance. Maybe he sits behind uh, Matt Ryan for two years. Kyle Pitts, again, crazy offensive weapon. Some people think it's wild to take a tight end that high. But Daniel Jeremiah himself said, uh, I think at the last episode of Around the NFL, just take out TE, put WR, and he's number one wide receiver in this draft class. Justin Fields, the Detroit Lions, at number seven. Honestly, I, I just feel bad for the kid. Everyone talks about the Jets ruining quarterbacks. How about the Lions just ruining players? Barry Sanders, he literally quit football because he was just done with that type of football. And Calvin Johnson, who also basically left because of the same reasons. Justin Fields, I just hope for the best for him. Number eight. We talked about before that Daniel Jeremiah, not a big fan of Panay Sewell. Not a big fan. He's still, I think, in his top 20. But he likes Rashawn Slater uh, at going at number eight out of Northwestern. He also did not play in this past college football season. Uh, when I saw from him, uh, besides from the highlights, I just loved his interactions that he had during his pro day. Of course, everyone saw the shove, heard around the world uh, when he shoved what I thought was his strength coach when he was doing 225. Uh, maybe it shows aggressiveness, that he loves the work. I don't know, but that could be a Matt Rule type thing. He seems Matt Rule seems to like gym rats. Marshawn Slater could be a gym rat. I saw how the pros depicted how the Panthers are going to do in the 2021 NFL mock draft. Let's see what the newbie idiots have to say. So I'm using a Pro Football Network's draft simulator. Let's go four quick and dirty rounds. Obviously, Panthers. Go at normal speed just so that we can react to what other teams do and get sad. All right, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. All right, no, Mac Jones, Justin Fields. Why? Bang, 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 bang. Four dudes straight up. Okay, no to the Saints. Chargers. Wow, that is a lot. So who's still on the board? We got Kyle Pitts, Waddle, Rashawn Slater, Patrick Sertain, Mac Jones, JC. There's a lot of good dudes. Do I take this? All right, we're going to get weird. Let's get – that's a really good – no, that's not a good one. That's not bad. Okay, let's get crazy. Let's take it. All right, so the Chargers could – wow, Christian Derrissaw, Micah Par Parkins, Parsons. No. 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 All right, so 
The way the draft fell after that, we got Christian Derrishaw to the Chargers. Micah Parsons, who I personally really liked as a guy who could cover tight ends and running backs in the NFC South. Patrick Sertain, the second to the Cowboys, the 10. That's a bit of a bummer. Wow. Kyle Pitts to the Giants. That'd be nice. And Jalen Waddle with Jalen himself. That's also a pretty good find for Philadelphia. But at 13, Rashawn Slater there. I mean, thank you. Boom. I wish they gave grades in this one. J.C. Horn, obviously. Right after, of course, that was my second pick, J.C. Horn, if it wasn't going to be Rashawn Slater. Because he's just nasty. He's just a nasty dude, and I think that's good in the corner. No, Arizona. No, no, to the birds. Gregory Rosso. Terrace Marshall Jr., Alex Leatherwood. So we already got our OT. What corners are out there? Asante Samuel Jr., bang. Bloodlines. One story I thought that was really cool. Uh, I think it was with Bucky Brooks. Those dudes with bloodlines, those dudes who have parents uh, who play in the NFL, they're t- telling them, go be a cornerback. Don't be a wide receiver. DJ, uh, DJ, Daniel Jeremiah, as if I know him, says that whenever they're putting up a draft board, they have so many wide receivers, but they almost have to go fishing for DBs. And so he says, if you want your kid to have a shorter route to the NFL, make them a DB. And it seems like, you know, these veteran NFL players are telling their kids exactly that. No. All right. Let's try to find a wide receiver. Elijah Moore out of Mississippi is getting a lot of love. So I got two Moors, two of the Moors that I was eyeing anyways. Elijah Moore has never fallen this much for me. Let's go the triple Moors. Bang. So we got DJ, David, and Elijah. I love it. Sounds like a Bible verse. This goes really slow. Okay, Javante Williams, that was a bummer. That's a guy I kind of wanted. Ronnie Perkins, wow, to the Hawks. So my last name is Perkins. My bro would probably get that jersey for sure if that were to happen. Round three. No. 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 Okay. So, can we get, uh, okay. So it looks for running back in terms of a, a, a one two punch with CMT to try to elongate his career. I like someone like Ramondi Stevenson who could be available in later rounds. Tight ends, Brevin Jordan. So he is kind of one of those like dudes from what I have been reading and seeing. Super athletic, but needs more coaching. Got a pretty good coaching staff. Brevin, you're going to Charlotte. So let's try to go offensive guard this time. And I'm going Aaron Banks solely because he went to Notre Dame. And if Quentin Nelson taught us anything, Notre Dame makes some dogs. Oh, I got another pick. This is what kind of GM I had. Totally forgot that we had that pick. Uh, reject. Oh, look at that. Ramondre Stevenson. Come on down. I love it. He could be kind of like that uh, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry guy, a bigger dude, straight line, strong, runs angry, which I love. I love, love, love. Because also Christian McCaffrey has been doing that too, despite the fact his offseason training program kind of has him literally slithering around. Uh, dude can, as we have must have learned by now, can run between the tackles. All right, so this is our haul. We we moved down in the draft with the Los Angeles Chargers. Still managed to get Rashawn Slater, Asante Samuel Jr. in the second round, Elijah Moore to try to replace the loss of Curtis Samuel, uh, Brevin Jordan, and then we got who, Brevin Jordan, who I think could be good just out of the U. I just think they have straight freaks down there, and he could be coached up to be legit. And then Aaron Banks, Ramon J. Stevenson. I think that's dope. All right, one thing you probably already may have figured out just from looking around. Merch, 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 merch. Uh, I got this, well, obviously in the 25th year, uh, when the Seahawks beat the Panthers at the bank. Uh, I lost this cup at the stadium. We were walking back to our hotel. I saw some dude with his girlfriend with this, with beer in it. And I asked him, when you're done that, can I loop around and grab this from you? He looked at me like a weirdo and he was like, mm, okay. And here it is. And I still use it. Don't tell my wife. The new stack of merch is coming, obviously, and that kicks off with the 2021 NFL Draft hats. And we're taking a look at the snapback version. They got a fitted version, but who honestly wears a fitted trucker hat? And honestly, I think it's okay. Would I wear this every day forwards? Never. I would strictly wear it backwards. If it was all black, I'd be cool with that. Don't really understand the stars in the front. We're not in Dallas. Drafts could be in Cleveland this year. But you know what? It's simple enough. Kind of reminds me if the Panthers were to have a brewery, that would be their logo and the Panther would be drinking. I don't mind it. And I'm all about the return of trucker hats, as long as it's not Von Dutch. 
All right, so that's episode one of Panther Post. You made it all the way to the end. That means you kind of dug it, right? So if you're here, like, subscribe, comment, hit me up on social media, Twitter, Instagram. I don't have TikTok yet. I think it'd be very embarrassing for everybody if I were to actually get TikTok and try to use it. So hit me up. Let's have some discussions. I, I love going live on Instagram Live. Uh, I'm planning on maybe going live and watching the draft. You guys can watch my reaction to the first round, second round, and then day three as well. Uh, but if you like, like, subscribe. Let's chat. Let's build this community, people. This team is only going to be getting better as each year goes on. Thanks for watching. See ya.